Hi, my name is Bob Greener and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are on the Vega Valley and we are in the Upper East Plateau and this, if you recall, is the area where from the central channel, uh, this area here, there was uh, what looked like plasmoids coming out and travelling across the surface and here is one of those tracks. So this is near moving up towards the central channel and moving away from the central channel. And uh, what's very interesting here, uh, it looks like there are these large areas of carbon deposits here. And the most interesting thing is, I can already see it on the screen, we've got a ball here, we've got a ball here, we've got a large ball here, there's another ball here with a carbon trail. And so I think that my hypothesis that the magnetic core of ball lightning uh, uh, was uh, and is this crenellated iron sphere and we've got another one over here i'm just looking around this there's one there <laughs> there's one there everywhere that where there's these this huge amount of carbon I, this is just completely replete so i'm going to take a high-res image of this and we're going to look at these already without zooming in and i haven't zoomed into this image i can see there's one there there's one there there's one maybe there uh, there's definitely one here with a carbon tail there's one here uh, and I can see there's one there, there's one there, and they are in these fields of carbon. So uh, there's another big one up here with a carbon field coming down here. So uh, I believe we are really starting to understand what is at the core of ball lightning. That's my hypothesis, and I think this is highly exciting data for me. I think this is coming down here, and it's producing vortical fields. So you've got material coming around and spinning around here, coming down and spinning around, coming down and spinning around here. So these are like uh, eddies or, or uh, diacritron instabilities or something as this is traveling forward. And I can see that there's carbon on the edge here. Now this might have come from the ball lightning interacting with the material. But on the center, it's lighter and I expect that that is copper. So we've got copper deposits on the top. We have this carbon around the outside and then we have the zinc and there's oh, probably a whole bunch of oxygen there. But we're going to investigate this area now. So I'm going to take a really nice image of this and then we'll go in. But this for me, this, this for me nails. <laughs> I can see, whilst it's taking this image, I can see there's another uh, iron ball here. Um, this is just amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. There's another one there. <laughs> there's another one there. <laughs> there's another one there in this carbon field. And maybe that's one there at the end of this carbon field. I don't know, but uh, wow. There's, oh, look, there's a little one there, and there's a carbon field coming off it. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is going to be joy to look around. Absolute joy. I think they're literally everywhere. There might be one at the end of here. There's definitely one there. There's one here with a little carbon running into it. Wow, 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 wow. Look, there's one here with the carbon. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for supporting this. <laughs> and thanks, Hank, for letting me have a look at your sample. Okay, let's see what we've got. I'm going to look at some of these. Look, look at this one here, which, which is on its own, but it's got a look a carbon trail coming from it i think it's carbon we'll find out in a second so let's go and have a look i'm pretty sure this is one of these crenellated iron spheres and there we have it <laughs> oh dear look at that beautiful thing one there as well and out of out of a pole we've got something coming out of the back side of the pole and it looks like we have lighter elements coming out of this way and heavier elements on the top maybe you know i don't know but uh, this for me is a thing of absolute joy let's have a look at the seb image i've got a lot of averaging going on there uh, let's look at the medium there and, uh, change the contrast okay so this is this carbon film coming out of it wow Look at that, it's like a little snake, so we need a bit of BSD to get some separation between these. 
and look at that. Oh, look at it. Look at it. It's got, it looks like a fluffy carbon thing on the end there. Look at it. That's it. It's like a, a worm. So let's find out what this is. And we've seen this, you'll see this actually in some ultra analysis where you have these things kind of blended into whatever this is. But uh, full BSD, it looks like this. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. What a complete honor to be doing this work. What a complete honor. So let's get a bit of SED in there to give us some morphological information. Yeah, so I think probably this is the area where I want to map. Mm -hmm. okay. Because I, I, I've seen 20 balls. And on every ball, I'll show you a couple quick here. Uh, you can see a trail of carbon coming out. And sometimes they come to the end of the channel, and there's a couple of balls there, and the whole area is full of carbon. Mm -hmm. I, I'm saying it's carbon, I just want a quick check now, but I think mm -hmm. it's carbon. I think we'll find it's carbon. Yeah. Pretty certain. And it'll be nearly pure carbon. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I just email? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ale já to udělám tak, že já ho vysedím v kanceláři, ale dost pravděpodobně to nebo budu v základním čem nebo pětě do spolupance. Jo, tak já to dám do kanceláře. Mhm. That's the iron. That's the iron on the ball. Look, mm -hmm. iron on the ball. And here's the carbon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. This is the first time you've seen so many balls. The, the, yeah, the first time I saw one of these balls was in a quarter of a million dollar plasma reactor using a microwave. Right? And it has these quartz reactor vessels, we call it supernova. And you just put carbon dust in there, mm -hmm. like charcoal, mm -hmm. which yeah. has other elements in it. Yeah. And then I saw a number of these crenelated iron spheres. And that was in 2016, in the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, then you, but then I started seeing them in different systems, uh -huh. and then uh, last year we found like one one ball in here which was doing something very odd, and I thought, well, okay, let's have a look. So I, I had to wait for another session on that SEM, and then we found the first of these very clear crenellate, which I showed you with the one I went straight to today, which I knew where it was, um, and. So, but I, I used optical macro photography to find other locations, and I already had seen 
and using a, a, just a normal micro, microscope. Yeah. I'd seen maybe five or six. Mm -hmm. But my speculation is the, the, the ball lightning has this as its core. And so um, I suspected that these tracks here are caused by the ball lightning. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, the, at the end of them, there should be one of these balls. And there is. So you have seen the, the carbonaceous material, but you haven't seen the ball. Well, Takaki Matsumoto, so, so your, your Brown, who created plasma with HHO, he said whatever the elements he puts in, it ends up being mostly carbon. Right? Mm -hmm. It transmutes it mostly to carbon. Takaki, so, that was in the 1980s. In, in the 1990s, Takaki Matsumoto, he, he found that you get these spheres made of whatever element it is, but out of it you get a, a plume from one end uh, 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 of carbon coming out of spray. Mm -hmm. And some, one of my colleagues, Slobodan Stankovic in Switzerland, a couple of years ago, he showed that when he put HHO on uh, carbon, he ended up with heavier elements forming in balls and out of the ball came a spray of carbon. Now, there is carbon in there already, but there isn't much carbon in here. But it's producing nearly, well, I imagine that this bit here is probably, can I do a point sample on here? Because, I mean, this is like, it's just carbon. <laughs> and there's no carbon around it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but you will get the signal from carbon, no, sorry, from, from carbon underneath, yeah, yeah, underneath. yeah, yeah, yeah. This carbon is uh, very, very probably too transparent, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, it's like, it's just perfect. And the, the copper is this blob here. Look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is in shadow from this. So this is yeah. quite hard. So, yeah, so, um, okay, so that, that's done. I'll, sh I'll just you, show you, you quick. You can, you can do a point if you want. But it will stop uh, Oh, can I? Oh, okay. It is it, but it's finished, I think, isn't it? Or not? It is. It's no... no okay, so, so if I... Now you have to... Do I not have to change what? it to point sample? Because I'm in map, mapping image. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Um, so if you just play, click plus, and now you, you make a, a point. Now, I wish... So, sulfur is double oxygen. Yeah. So, it's seeing the copper and zinc underneath. So, I, I think, you know, the carbon is a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. You could, you could almost exclude the, the copper and zinc in, but I excluded those to find the real figure. If you exclude those, uh, and you have the automatic, oh, okay. it may add a, another... Oh, uh, okay, so right. So oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, it's so, guessing. <laughs> yes, it's trying to yeah. fit the, the yeah, 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 yeah. So if you, at the end, if you switch off the automatic mm -hmm. notification, then you can exclude Okay, those. okay. Good to know. Atomic concentration, look, by atomic atoms, it's basically carbon with a bit of oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> and and it put, puts out basically pure carbon. Mm -hmm. Whatever element you put in, mm -hmm. it's just amazing. Th this is the thing that makes life. Mm -hmm. In my view. Because yeah. <laughs> you need carbon for life. Carbon, oxygen, you know, basically. <laughs> the rest is additional. Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen is done. You can't see it off hydrogen here, but it will have made hydrogen, I'm, I'm certain, in the process. Mm -hmm. So here you have uh, the Small abiotic piece. process for making hydrocarbons. Mm -hmm. you, you're literally seeing it here. So under intense temperatures and, pla uh, and plasma in, in situations in the earth, 
it takes whatever elements and it produces carbon and hydrogen. That makes hydrocarbons. Yeah, in the center. It, it, so, uh, under the ground, yeah. you have high pressures, high temperatures. You create plasmas in there. It, you, you've got like it, so a, li a liquid metal. Yes, there is a really re good reason to suggest because when you yeah, do these right. experiments, when you when you transmit elements like it, um, it would appear you get excess hydrogen. The reason is because if it's trying to fit it into a small box, which it does, and that's why it's trying to create iron, because that fits it into a small box, a lot of pressure, so it makes iron, right? Mm -hmm. um, if there is a bosons can fit in there, but fermions mm -hmm. can't, so they get kicked out, and, and the most likely fermion is a proton. So it gets kicked out, so you make hydrogen. But if you have matter collapse, which happens inside the ball, and it comes out of the, one of the poles, it comes out of the north pole, um, you get carbon coming out. And so you get these structures that make hydrogen and carbon. And then they're under pressure. And this means oil and gas are not a, um, they're not a limited resource. If you came back to the well in a thousand years' time, it would be there again. <laughs> And the, the Russians kind of believe that there is a, a process that goes on that continues to make oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's important yes. because plant food is carbon dioxide, right? It's incredibly important. And we've got a low level of carbon dioxide relative to much of Earth's history right now. Um, no, some periods. Yeah, yeah some periods, we, you know, when there was a lot of plants. <laughs> if we get rid of all the carbon dioxide, we don't have plants, which means like we can't even feed our animals. Yeah. Let alone us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, anyway, uh, yeah, so look at this, this is just, uh, and I imagine that this is mostly iron, so, so I'll. We should on. maybe change our uh, <laughs> attitude to Green Deal. <laughs> to what? To a Green Deal. It's always been a scam. So I, I, I believed in it from the age of five until 44. Uh -huh. I, you know, I, when I was seven or eight years old, I had a, well, maybe nine, I think, I had a, a solar panel, like one, I think it was six inch by six inch. Mm -hmm. And I had a load of mirrors, yeah. and I made a parabolic mirror, and I, I had my light and my fan in my room run off that. I made a solar panel from my, the hotel swimming pool, my parents had a hotel, uh -huh. and uh, out of like black piping and stuff. You know, and I, I got involved with this research because I genuinely thought there was a problem with energy. But I, I don't think there is because this, this technology converts radioactive material into carbon and oxygen and calcium. These are the things you see. Why calcium? It's, it's 10 alpha particles. Why carbon? It's 3 alpha particles. Why mm -hmm. oxygen? It's 4 alpha particles. Very stable group of nucleons. And so we have lots of thorium. We have lots of uranium. This can produce all the energy without re relying on the sun, the weather, or hydrocarbons. Mm -hmm. So for me, I've come to a point of realizing that it's a scam. Yeah. They genuinely want to pretend there is a scarcity of energy. Yeah. There is scarcity of energy from the sun. <laughs> Yeah, but there's much more energy that we can utilize and command that yeah. isn't relying on the sun. Mm -hmm. You rely on the sun, you have to wait for good weather. You have, yes. to, wait for, you have to wait for a, a high pressure zone and a low pressure zone and the wind movement between them, but not too much wind, because you have to turn the turbines off and it's too much wind. Not enough wind? Can't run them. Too much wind? Run them. Yeah. Can't run them. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, yeah, I think we want to map this area, but I, I, you know, there you go. So, by weight, this ball, looking at that first spot, is nearly 70% iron. Mm -hmm. Every time. <laughs> yeah. And 27% and, and is oxygen. It's basically FeO. Uh -huh. That's absolutely amazing. Just amazing. I feel so lucky to be able to do this. So lucky.
So I'm just going to have a quick look around this area because uh, over so here I saw some. I have to deliver something from, from the crowd. Okay, I can, uh, I can wait here for a second and then we can go. Well, yeah, yeah, cool. Probably 10. Okay. <laughs> oh! Always something interesting around. <laughs> ah, I'm crenellated for what we're looking at here. This is this is a small one, about five microns, and it has a carbon trail. Is an even smaller one in its own little carbon plume. This one is, and you can see it's actually got facets on it. This is a two micron ball. Okay, and uh, let's look up here. There's one buried in here. Uh, let's have a look at this one over here. This one's nice. I'm not going to bother focusing these so much, but. This is 5.66 micrometers. Got one here. All right, it's moving around. These things are charging. Okay. I've got the beam energy on very high at the moment, so what I might do is just turn that down. Uh, let's go and have a look at the one at the end of this carbon trail. Oh, this is just, what an honour. Thank you, Hank. Look at that. Carbon trail, we have our iron-rich crenellated sphere. Look at it. What a thing of beauty. <laughs> so this shows you your elements with the full BSD on it. And I will do contrast on that. And over here, the SED showing more of the morphological structure. Contrast on that. This area here, I think, is just a plateau of material, or a, a sorry, a flat chunk that's just broken off and deposited itself somewhere else, flaked off of the substrate. <laughs> so my hypothesis is the smaller ones will be out in these. Uh, plasmoid channels and the big ones are going to be in the main channels that's where we'll find the biggest versions still some fairly large ones out here They are everywhere. Oh my god. <laughs> doink, doink, doink. <laughs> Be this easy. <laughs> oh dear, look at this. Lovely. What have we got here? This one is four, nearly five microns. You see the little carbon plume around it. 
get some more of the geometry here. See where we are in the Badlands, not the Badlands, the uh, Eastern Plateau. I'm going to change the beam energy here to try and get a better image of these things. It'll move. So you can see the plume of carbon coming out this side that came from over there. This is the field around it and this is the central area. And these are the segmentations. So they're wonderful. So you can imagine how these sections here would look like um, the Matsumoto structures. I don't know whether we're seeing that kind of structure, but uh, anyway, we'll take an image here. Thank you. 
Incredible. Just incredible. This one looks like it's buried itself in. Incredible. And joined together, look. Wow. So this one is oh, it's 10 microns across. This one is a bit fuzzy, so we don't really know, but I guess it's maybe sort of the same sort of scale. This one's got a nice crisp edge. So this is 13, 14 microns across. Looks like the pole's there, actually, like bang facing up. So through the pole, yeah, 14 roughly microns. See what we see with the SUV. Wow. Now, I imagine that this is silicon around here. Silicon around here. Getting a bit blown out over there. Okay. Somewhere in between the two. I probably need to focus it again. Yes. Not so good, but. I'm going to switch that back to point image to take a nice image. I think there's silicon. I think this might be silicon. I think we have calcium in here and, and uh, carbon. And it just got the whole synthesis going on. It's just amazing. <laughs> what, a, what an honor. And uh, I think we've got a north pole here. I think we've got a north well, I don't know, they're binding together. But it's the way that the silicon is like. I think that's where the carbon It's It's a uh, glassy carbon yeah. or, or it's silicon. Yeah, because it's slightly rice away. Mm -hmm. Well, it's charging up here significantly. Okay. So. so I'll try to finish the video. Okay. Alright. Um, so you are still less than 10 EBS windows, right? Okay, so do you make any EBS analysis right now? Mm -hmm. Just to make Not, uh, I might have done one that. Sorry. 
I'm going to do a couple of these guys now. For me, I, I want to really characterize all these balls now. <laughs>
very, very nicely isolated. <laughs> iron balls, iron and oxygen. When is the right time for one? Right. Um, I think we'll do a, a map map. You know what I mean, an image map map. Mm -hmm. but not this kind of map. You know, a trial. Okay. Yeah. The trial is. You mean trial of images? Yes. One more reason one. Okay. Then we can see. Where these are, but I can I can see where they are because they're always where there's a, a black hole. Uh -huh. The only thing I'm not sure what is the magnification. Oh, not at this magnification further out. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I was thinking how many images will be there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I, I, because imaging is quite great. So it, Mm -hmm. We said that for a few thousand, maybe, maybe. maybe still working when we can. So maybe, maybe if, it, if it's a few thousand, it may be also uh, an issue with the focus. So. This is very flat, this area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's why I think yeah, it's a good place. Well, I, I, I didn't know if you are going to measure the display. Or, or yeah, no, I want this area because this area has got so many balls in it. Okay. I think maybe what happens, the balls are made in the middle, and if they don't join together into one big ball, it breaks off. Because there's a guy called uh, Oroitska, and he had a, a titanium foil in water, inside a, a, a PTFE container, inside a, a metal container, mm -hmm. and he does a capacity discharge through the titanium foil, and he gets a ball lightning outside of the container. And then a few microseconds later, the ball lightning then breaks up and little ball lightnings go off. Okay? And so, I imagine that if, if it becomes unstable, a bit will come off and it, it becomes its own ball lightning. And that's what you're seeing here, is many of them coming off. Mm -hmm. And they find their own channels. I will show you some beautiful macro images and, and mm -hmm. stuff, which show these channels and you, you can see um, they're very distinct and they wind their way down, and what we're seeing is sometimes they eat more material, mm -hmm. in my theory, <laughs> they eat more material and they make more of the iron. And mm -hmm. sometimes that becomes unstable and the bit comes off, and so you get these little balls off to the side. Yeah. But this is at the end of the channel and we've got three balls. Mm -hmm. And it might be that one came down here and another one came down here, this followed the same channel. Yeah. Okay. Um, 